Okay, welcome back to installment three of indoor gardening that you can do in the winter when your garden isn't ready to receive plants yet. I've already talked about starting um, simple things like greens, like lettuces and spinach or baby greens is what I grew. Um, so I could have some things for my smoothies and things to put in my salad. And then we talked about microgreens, which are also super simple to start in your kitchen within, and you'll be eating on them within a week to two weeks, depending on the seed variety. And now we're gonna be talking about sprouts, which is really the simplest of all three. Maybe I should have reversed this and done sprouts first. <laughs> so you could have them first. In fact, I might just flip flop these videos when I post them. Regardless, this is the third way that you can have fresh food that you've grown in your house in the middle of winter. So let's talk about sprouts. Sprouts are super simple. Um, really, all you need is seeds, water, and this little kind of setup I'm going to show you. There's a couple ways to do it. You can even buy sprout starters for a fairly reasonable price on Amazon or other seed starting companies. Um, I'm using things I have on hand because I'm trying to save all my money for things that I might need in a garden or otherwise. So let me show you how you do this. First of all, you want to have a bowl or a tray that will hold water because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your seeds. These are radish seeds, which are great for doing sprouts. You're going to want to soak those seeds for 12 hours. So pick your seeds. I can already smell them starting to like soak up that water. I'm going to put a list of things that you can use to make sprouts in the comments. So make sure and check that below because you might already have those seeds on hand and have, can have some sprouts to eat within five days. Yes, five days. Pretty awesome. So anyway, pick your seeds. These are radish seeds. You could also use lettuce, lettuce seeds or pea seeds. There we go. It's kind of hard to say. And you want to soak them, fully immerse them in water, filtered water if you have it, and let them soak up this water for 12 hours. What that's going to do is it's going to soften the shell of the seed and it's going to allow them to germinate much faster. So if you put a seed in the dirt, um, it's going to receive generally, unless it's had a lot of rain, it's going to receive a lot less water around that seed shell, but the water is what causes it to soften and then allows that shoot and the root to come out. So by soaking them for 12 hours, you're kind of expediating, <laughs> is that a word? Speeding up that process. So a great way to do this is to start um, your sprouts before you go to bed. So you get your seeds, you put them in a bowl of water like this. You can also put them in a mason jar. A lot of people start their sprouts in mason jars, which you can do that as well. I'll tell you my caveat for that here in just a second. So put them in your mason jar, put them in your bowl, put them in your sprout starting kit, whatever you choose to use and soak them for 12 hours. If you do it overnight, then you can get up in the morning and what you're gonna do is you're going to pour your, uh, your seeds and your water through a strainer. Okay, and hot tip, make sure you don't throw away that water that you soaked your seeds in because it is full of nutrients that came from that seed shell and you can actually use that to water your indoor plants. You can feed it to your animals and you can actually give it to your seed starts if you've already start, started them. So do not throw that water out. It's full of really good stuff that you're gonna wanna use to, um, for plants that you may already have growing in your house. Like I said, house plants. <laughs> um, now I don't have, the fine mesh strainers that I have would totally work. They're on a handle um, and they're smaller and I could use that. But what I actually did was I took this flat bottom strainer um, and I'll tell you why I chose this here in just a second. But I took this flat bottom strainer and I used an old mesh um it was like a, something I used to put on top of my skillets when I was cooking bacon, but it was tearing apart. And instead of throwing it away, I cut out that mesh. I washed it really well with soapy water and scrubbed any sort of residue that was left on it from what I had used it for in the past. And I'm putting it in the bottom of the strainer. The reason being these holes that are here, those are too big um, for these seeds. These radish seeds will go right through that hole. So you want to make sure if you're using a strainer that's a fine mesh strainer that those seeds won't go through because you're going to be rinsing these seeds twice a day for the next 
five to seven days, okay? Okay, so what you're gonna do when you wake up in the morning is you're gonna take your seeds that you were soaking overnight, you're gonna put your strainer on top of another bowl like this, because remember, we're gonna save that water, and you're gonna pour your seeds through the mesh strainer and drain all that water out. Make sure you have clean hands if you're touching your seeds or sprouts. You don't want to pass any sort of bacteria or anything onto those live, which will soon be live seeds, um, and causing any sort of contamination. So I'm shaking. I'm shaking this to make sure I get any excess water out. There's still a lot of water dripping out of the bottom here. So I'm shaking it. The other thing I'm doing, you can tap it on the side, help get some extra water out. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm going to make sure that these seeds are on a single layer on this mesh. You really don't want them piled on top of each other because you're going to be rinsing these seeds twice a day for the next five to seven days. So they're going to be getting water on them, but that water, you want it to drain off into the bowl that's underneath them. If they are not getting appropriately drained or if they're stacked on top of each other where that moisture is sitting with them, that's when they can start to mold or get mildew, which is going to make you sick if you eat it. So you really want to make sure that you kind of push these seeds out, and I'll show you here in a second, and give them room to not necessarily dry out because you're going to be giving them water twice a day, but not be sitting in water um, with a chance to mold or mildew. So let me finish doing this here and I'll show you. So I have the seeds all, you know, they're kind of moving around, but you could even use like the back of a spoon or something to kind of spread them out. And I may do that after this video, go in the kitchen, just get a spoon and kind of spread them out, but they're going to sit nice and flat on that strainer. And what you'll do is after you've um, strain them, you're actually going to get fresh water. So you could use it from your um, water faucet or if you're using filter water and you're going to rinse them. So you're going to put your bowl over the sink, you know, wherever it can drain and you're going to rinse those seeds. So I may have just done all that evening out for no reason because <laughs> I forgot to tell you you have to rinse them. So you're going to rinse them with clean water, clean water. I don't have a faucet in here. I'm sitting at my desk showing you this, so I'm kind of just making do. So rinse them really good with the water and then put them back over the straining bowl, all right? Make sure they're in a single layer, so I'll have to do that again. And then you're gonna wanna cover them so it stays dark. Now here's what makes this so great. You don't need grow lights. You don't need light for sprouts. They actually prefer the dark. So all you need is something to catch the water or something to soak them in, something to strain the water that they'll sit in after they've soaked for 12 hours and that you'll rinse them every day, twice a day for like five to seven days. So by the end of the week, you're gonna be eating these sprouts, which is pretty awesome. Growing your own food and maybe we'll eat it in a week. You can't really beat that. <laughs> so here's your setup, super simple bowl, strainer, fine mesh strainer, and a plate or something to set on top of it um, to keep it dark and also to keep it from getting contaminated. Uh, in my house, one of the things that we struggle with is animal hair. I have a St. Bernard who loves to shed and his fur gets in everything. Well, I don't want his fur getting into these sprouts. So not only am I rinsing them to keep them clean, to keep them moist so they'll germinate, but I want this lid on here to keep them clean as well and keep any sort of dust or contaminants out of that. So that's really it. Um, like I said, depending on which seed variety you're using, you could be eating these sprouts in five to seven days. Let me give you a hot tip of how you can enjoy them. Get yourself some nice toasty bread, whatever kind of bread you like, even if it's gluten-free. Put on some cream cheese or something along those lines. It could even be guacamole or hummus whatever floats your boat, and then lay those sprouts on top of it and take a nice crunch. Arr, so good. I like to eat mine plain. That's one way you can eat them. Just go to Pinterest or Google and look up sprout recipes or recipes with sprouts. You'll get all kinds of ideas. I may try to post one below. Um, but there's lots of things you can do with sprouts. And just like microgreens, they're full of nutrition. All of that nutrition that was in that little seed is now in this itty bitty real sprout and you're eating lots of them at one time. So you're just getting like a power punk, power punch of nutrition. So 
If you're like me and you're starting to get antsy for the garden season and you're tired of buying your greens at the grocery store, start growing your own. You can be eating them in five to seven days if you're doing sprouts. You can be eating microgreens within a week to two weeks, and you can be eating salad greens within 20 to 30 days, depending on the variety that you purchase. So I have three different systems going on here. So I'm excited that I can be done with the grocery store salad greens and I can start eating them from my own kitchen within the next couple weeks up to a month. So if you decide to do this with me, you better post your pictures and videos of you eating them or prepping them or planting them down below. I love seeing others of you do this along with me. That's the whole point is I'm supposed to get helping you and we're doing it together and sharing ideas of how we could be gardening and even in the dead of winter. So, oh, before I leave, I wanted to make sure I explained the mason jar. I almost forgot. If you want to use a mason jar, how you would do this is you'd obviously soak your seeds in here. Okay. You want to have some sort of mesh. You could use the wire mesh like I just showed you. Um, you probably really have to screw tight if you put a, uh, one of these screw top lids over it or maybe a rubber band. I'm using a uh, cheesecloth. So I'm going to probably pour, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet if I do a mason jar, probably pour them into a mesh strainer and rinse them out and put them back. Or you could just drain it through the cheesecloth. But you're still going to have to take this off to rinse them, rinse them, swish them around, put this back on and drain it. I'll be honest, I haven't tried this method yet. So you'll just kind of have to see. You can either strain them through a mesh strainer you have in your house and then put them back in the jar. Um, or you can try straining them upside down like this. But you're going to want to keep them where they're draining upside down. You know what I mean? You don't wanna leave them sitting at the bottom of the jar where there's water and you might have chance for mold or mildew. You could also do it on the side like this where there's more um, space for the seeds to lay. But again, you wanna make sure that water isn't pooling in here. So I think the best way to do it is where the seeds are sitting on the mesh. The only thing is, and that's why I chose not to use the mason jar method is you're not going to have as much area for a thin layer of seeds um, either on the side or inside of that lid, if that makes sense. If you're supposed to keep your seeds in a single layer um, where they're getting air and moisture, you just don't have as much space in a mason jar as you would with like a flat bottomed straining bowl or even some of the sprout starting kits. I hope that makes sense. Lots of people use mason jars. You can look up um, videos on people doing this. I would just tell you, make sure they're explaining how you keep your seeds from mold and mildewing. If they're not telling you that, I would find another video because that's really what you want to avoid when you're doing sprouts of any kind, okay? So go out there, try something new, grow some food, and post, post it if you do. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.